Assalamu alaikum. My name is Haya, and I just have one question for you tonight. Islam is a religion of peace and freedom of thought and freedom of speech. So why in the Quran does it say that if a Muslim who is born a Muslim should be punished by death if he chooses not to follow the religion anymore? Sister, you said the Quran says that a person who is born as a Muslim and he changes his religion, he should put to death. Sister, I don't know of any verse in the Quran. You point out in the Quran, there's no such verse in the Quran talking about that a person who is a Muslim and then who changes his faith, he should be put to death. But there are certain rulings. But if you go back to the history, the theory of the Prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know that when the Prophet went to Medina, there was one Sahaba who came and said that when the Prophet said, go and kill these kafirs, they're causing problems, they are the enemies. So one of the Sahaba said that, please forgive my brother. And the Prophet didn't kill him. And later on, that person accepted Islam. So it's not a general rule that any person who's a Muslim who becomes a murtad, he has to be put to death. The ruling is, if a person who is a Muslim, who becomes a murtad, who changes his faith and propagates against the religion of Islam, then the penalty is death. And this is in most of the countries. For example, if in the country of India, there's a citizen of India who shares the secret prince of the Indian army with the enemy. The Indian law will say he should be put to death or life imprisonment. This is the same law in America, same in UK for apostasy. The same law that is there that if you sell your some secret of the country, either death penalty or life imprisonment. So in Islam, it is not a normal ruling that a person who is a Muslim, when he becomes a non-Muslim, he should be put to death. Only if he propagates against Islam and conspires against Islam, then is the ruling of death, sister. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you so much. Yes, you did. The most welcome, Thank sister. You. The next question from the brother on my left. Ramadan Karim to everyone. My name is Peter. I work with al -Fatim. My question, first question, I have a few questions to ask. Who is God? Brother has a question, who is God? And this is the same question that was asked by the Christians to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was, what should I answer? We can keep on speaking about God. Then the revelation came. Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. Kul ho Allah ho ad. Say he's Allah one and only. Allah ho samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufana. There's nothing like him. This is a four line definition of Almighty God given in the Quran. Any candidate you say is Almighty God, if that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. The first is Kul ho Allah ho ad. Say he's Allah one and only. Number two, Allah ho samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufanad. There's nothing like him. This is the four line definition of Almighty God. Whoever you worship and say is God, if he fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as God. Hope that answers the question. Okay. If I do say God is a strength, for instance, I give an example just to explain to my point. If it's raining, just leave aside the scientific way of rain, how it comes. The rain, how it forms, and how it rains, and how it ends. Can I just say that's God? Just leave aside the scientific way. Brother, I said that if I just say how it drains, leave off it scientific, if I say that is God, is it correct? No, it's not correct. It goes against the definition of God I gave you. What you can say, it is from God, min Allah, no problem. Okay. But you can't say that is God. Rain is not God. Is he one? No. Begets not. It contradicts most of the definition of Surah Ikhlas. What you can say, it is from God, min Allah, no problem. Hope that's the question. We'll just allow some other non-Muslims and we'll come back to you, brother. Shall we have the next question from the middle aisle? Morning, Mr. Nayak, and uh, my name is Soumya and uh, working in the field of media for last two years over here. My question is related to media itself. That, 
has been told by you that uh, media has created a perception or a wrong uh, perception of Islam and uh, as in uh, the people they are believing that uh, Islam is blind uh, due to this media but um, my question is that uh, right now as in uh, you can take an example of India the uh, percentage of the literate people is more than the percentage is very minimum as in the illiterate peoples. So no one is really forcing the illiterate peoples to follow that particular news of blah, 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 shit. But uh, they are believing that uh, what they are seeing on that particular media. Could you please uh, tell me that how media is making the people wrong perception of Islam? Well, that's the question that how is media creating a wrong perception of Islam? Whether I give a full talk, full talk explaining the media is saying things which doesn't exist in Islam. And I've given the talk on media and Islam, war or peace. It's a full talk and giving various strategies used by media. What does media do? Media picks up the black sheep of the Muslim community and they portray as though they're exemplary Muslims. What does media do? Media quotes verses of the Quran out of context. Media says things about Islam that don't exist in Islam. Media says women are subjugated. Where are they subjugated? I've given a full talk and speech on this topic. Media and Islam, war or peace. Please see that cassette and that was the talk I had given last time when I was called by the Dubai International Holy Quran Award. That was four years back. You can surely take the DVD and see it, inshallah. The next question from the sister side. Uh, my name is Florenda. I'm a Christian. And I have followed all your talks and uh, I really admire um, listening to you regarding, you know, I mean, comparison between Christianity and Islam. It's my pleasure to ask you a question. Actually, um, a while ago, it was uh, asked regarding the Judgment Day or the Second Coming. Um, I believe that Christian and Muslim believe on that and uh, both religions are preparing on the Judgment Day. Um, I have a friend who is a Muslim, and he always uh, told me that I'll be safe in Islam. Now, I wanted to ask you, what's the difference between, you know, um, preparation of Christian and the uh, Muslims to be safe in the second life, and how you will encourage me to embrace Islam? Sister, the difference between a Muslim and a Christian preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and the day of judgment is, the Christian is waiting for Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as almighty God to come. We Muslims are waiting that he will come and clarify that he is not God. He will come and follow the commandments of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Jesus Christ said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. So Jesus Christ said about the coming of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so, if I have to help you, I will tell that follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Only if you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will you be safe on the day of judgment. So to help you, I would say that besides believing in Almighty God, you have to believe that Jesus is a messenger of God, and you also have to believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of God, sister. Sister, do you believe that there is one God? Yes. Do you believe Jesus is God or is he a messenger? Messenger. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is messenger? Yes. So that means you are a Muslim sister. <laughs> Would you like to say it in Arabic? Uh, yes. I'll just repeat the kalma in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. I should do Allah Allah Ilaha Ilaha Illallah Illallah Wa Ashadu Wa Ashadu Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Abduhu Abdu Wa Rasuluhu Wa Rasuluhu I bear witness I bear witness I Bear witness. Bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad. Is. Is. His messenger. His messenger. And servant of God. Sorry. And servant of God. And servant of God. Mashallah, Jazakallah, sister. May Allah reward you. May Allah accept your efforts.
and inshallah inshallah i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he save you from the hellfire and may he grant to jannah on the day of judgment inshallah should we have the next question from the brother again in prayers is it right to pray to god to ask him that i want to see you the brother asked the question that is it right in prayers to ask god that i want to see you if you say i want to see you in the next life it's acceptable if you say i want to see you in this life it's not possible because there's a verse in the quran which is mentioned in surah taha that musa alayhi salam the messenger of god he said i want to see god so god said look at the mountain i will show my glimpse to the mountain you look at the mountain what happens so the moment god showed a glimpse to the mountain the mountain fell at a ruin and moses peace be upon him fainted you cannot see god in this world in this life you cannot but on the day of judgment there are many things of the prophet that in jannah we would love to see the face of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala face of almighty god and that would be a pleasure for us so if you pray that may you see allah in the next life in jannah inshallah very good prayer but you can't see almighty god in this world hope that's the question the next question quickly from inshallah we'll just permit one more round from the non muslims and there's a request from the chairman of the dubai international holy quran award that all the brothers who have accepted islam the sisters can wait at the side out and request them to come on the stage but all the brothers who had accepted islam the chairman personally would like to congratulate them if they would like if they are willing if they are present here they should come on the stage inshallah after we answer the last session the brothers and sisters the sisters can wait in the sister section but the brothers can come on the stage the chairman mr ibrahim bumala would like to congratulate them personally so the brothers the few brothers of accepted islam if you are here and if you have not gone away please make it a point to come on the stage i too would like to meet you so inshallah we'll just take the last few questions and then inshallah give a personal congratulation to the brothers of accepted islam by the time the volunteers can see to it that the brothers of accepted islam can please come on the right of the stage and then come on the stage later on yes brother yeah thanks dr zakir naik you're a big help um i have one more question i'm a bit confused between the two verses in quran um the first one is in surah bakra 62 yeah which says that if you believe in one god and believe in the last day and do good deeds yeah you shall have nothing to fear on the day of judgment yeah and you will get your reward with your lord yeah mind it in this surah it doesn't say it uh, that you have to believe in the prophet muhammad peace be upon him as a last messenger and there is also another surah which supports this which is the 22 in chapter number 22 and verse number 17 i think in which it says a similar thing that those who do who believe in one god who believe in the last day and who do good deeds will be fine on the day of judgment but then there is also one more verse in the quran which says that whosoever amongst you comes to me without the religion of islam it shall not be accepted of him and he shall be among the losers so in that last verse does islam mean believing in one god and believing in prophet muhammad and believing in all the other rituals or because islam means submission so whoever has submitted yeah is submitted so you know what's the meaning of islam in the last verse the brother asked a very good question he quoted verse of the quran of surah baqarah chapter 2 verse number 62 that all those who believe in allah and believe in the last day irrespective whether they are jews or christians or sabians they shall have no fear and inshallah they will have the reward similar thing is repeated in surah maida chapter number 5 so brother is asking that here the world doesn't mention believing in prophet if you read the context of this revelation brother what happened people came to the prophet and said that we have been jews we have been christian we have been sabians can god forgive us in that context the reply was given as long as you believe in allah and the last day irrespectively previously whether you are a christian or a jew or a sabian you will get the reward it does not mean today a person who says he is a christian and who believes jesus is god he will go to jannah no it does not mean that not be jesus is god believes in one god ha ah, believe in one god but if they believe jesus is god then they won't go to jannah fine but my fine. concern my point is yes. believe in one true god correct so he has to believe in one true god and if he believes in true god he also follow the commandment of god simple yeah but maybe he is confused with that yeah so that means he is believing in a confused god no he believe he he believes in his creator yeah but he he is not yet reached that level so then if you ask me the question a person who truly believes in god and little bit confused from his heart 
and yet doesn't believe in Prophet Muhammad, will he go to heaven or hell? That's your question. My question is, he is clear that there is one God. Clear there is one God. He is confused in the prophethood. He does not do idol worship. He does, does not do that. He believes in one God and does good deeds and believes in the last day. Can he go to Jannah is your question? Yes. Fine. This answer, and I'll come to your last question also about that Islam is the only way of life. Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 48 and Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 116, if Allah pleases, he may forgive any of your sin, but the sin of shirk he'll never forgive. Okay. If yeah. Allah pleases, he will forgive any sin, mm. but the sin of shirk he'll never forgive. Yeah. This means the only sin that God will never forgive 100% is associating partners with God. Sure. Okay. So if you believe in one God, yeah. don't associate partners, but do not believe in Prophet Muhammad. Can you go to heaven? Yes. Chances are they very bleak. Okay. Maybe 0 0.0000000001%. I can't say 100% no, because yeah. if you're not doing shirk, the other verses talk about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah. So if you truly believe, you have to believe in Prophet Muhammad. Yes. But if you ask me no, suppose I believe in God and if I die today. Yes. If you did good deeds, you believed in God, chances are they're very, very little. Like you jump from the 100th floor, Chances you live is there? Yes. How, so much, how much are the chances? How much are the chances? Of getting saved how in that state. Is? So if you jump from the Buruj, yeah. Buruj of Dubai. And then you're going to go to hell. I mean, then, no, then no. you're going to die. Not die. <laughs> can you live? Yet you can live. Chances is 0.001%. Yes. So the same chances here. But I, ha no, I have two verses of the Quran supporting yeah. me. That you believe in one God, you do good deeds, and you believe in the last day, you shall have nothing to fear on that day. That's what I have to do. Yeah. Two verses, but the context of the verse is what? Yeah, that the context of the verse is when people came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they wanted to accept Islam that previously we were Jews, we were Christians, then the verse is said. The yeah. context is important. And coming back to your first question, mm -hmm. that Quran says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse number 19, in Naddina in the law of Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is submitting our will to God. Submitting, yeah. Submitting will to God. And Quran also says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 85, if anyone desires any other religion besides Islam, it will never be accepted of him. And he shall be amongst the losers. Yes. So now submitting our will to God means, first you have to find out which is the true God. Yes. And when you find out, you have to come to Allah. Yes. You can't say, I believe in true God, but in Jesus. I believe in no, true God. No, I believe, I believe in Allah. Huh. That's, so if you believe, believe in Allah, in God, yes. you have to follow what is the commandment of Allah. Now, when, when I, you believe in Allah, and if you don't come to commandment of Allah, that means it's not a true Allah. I believe Allah is not created by anyone. He is not born of anyone. He doesn't have kids. Uh, he, you know... Correct. Kulhu Allahu ahad Allahu samallam yalud walam yulad walam yulad I believe in that, Masha. yeah, but that's, okay. that's where my state is. That's right. Yeah, so now, now, that's not complete Islam, that's part of Islam. Yeah. Part of Islam. Yeah. So now part of Islam will take you to heaven. Chances are very little, very little. Right, right. You know, very little. Right. Even believing in Prophet alone will not take you to Jannah. You may believe in one God, believe in Prophet, but do bad deeds, you will not go to heaven. Fine? Yeah. So what you have to realize, your chances are very bleak, like jumping from Buruj to Dubai. Right. And then living, that's your chance. If you believe that true God, when you know where you got those Kulwal Lawas, from where? From where you got this from Kulwal Lawas? I got it from the Quran. From the Quran. Yes. So from the Quran, you also get yeah, Surah Muhammad. That, that Shah part Bahad. agrees with my brain. That part agrees with my brain. Yeah, the rest, I have questions. So, so what uh, question you have asked me, I will try and... Right. <laughs> so on the day of judgment, I can tell you, I gave this brother, I tried to remove the misconception. Right, okay, I'll take... Uh, well, that's a little bit of a private question. I'll ask you through email. Okay, fine. One no problem. Question, the last question. So when you ask from email, yeah. when you get convinced, that time I'll ask you to believe in Prophet Muhammad also. Sure, sure. Okay. Fine? Yeah, my last question is, uh, we see uh, this, uh, the, the style of uh, the Kalima, yeah, that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah means there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is a messenger of God, yeah? Now, Islam uh, has this distinct style. I have not seen this style in Christianity or Judaism, that kind of kalima. Do I don't know? I mean, is, was there the same no. kind of kalima in no. those two religions as well? No. You know why? Yeah. Because it says there is no God but Allah. Yeah, and similar, similar, similar in those lines. I'll tell you. And Prophet Muhammad is a messenger and servant. So no one should worship Prophet Muhammad. Therefore, it's mentioned there. Fine? Yeah, Tomorrow so people should not start worshipping Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, yes. We love him, we respect him, we revere him, we are ready to die for him, but we don't worship him. I understand. So maybe in Christianity they could have something like, there is only one God, and, Jesus, and Father, Jesus, peace be upon Father, him. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
Well, no, but I'm talking about what Jesus told, not what Christians are telling today. And every time of the prophet, it was la ila illallah, that time Isa or Rasulullah, no problem. It was, it was that time. No, that is what people had to believe in. Not in Arabic, in the language they spoke. No, what I'm saying is from your yes. study, from your yes. study, have you yes. found a kalima like that in, in what mm. Jesus would have not, said? Not in Arabic. Okay. At every time, that you had to believe in the prophet to be a Muslim. Yeah. So at that time you have to believe in one God and you have to believe Jesus for the prophet of God. At the time of Moses, you have to believe that there is no God but Allah and Moses was the messenger of Allah. You have to believe in that. I understand, but did you see that reference? It in, is understood. In... There is no reference in the Quran. The because... Quran says they were messengers. It is understood. And if I don't believe in Jesus, now also I'm not a Muslim. Quran I... says you have to believe in each and every messenger today. Yeah. So believing that time was a must. Yeah. And today you have to believe in Musa salam, and Isa salam. You ask me the question, did you have to believe that time? Simple no, logic, I, yes. I know you have to believe at that time as well. Yes. What I'm saying is, why don't I see any, any, any kalima like that in today's Christianity or Judaism? Oh, today's Christianity has changed Christianity. How about Judaism? I it don't is see... changed. It is changed, brother. The so, Bible so, they removed, so they removed the basic of, of the kalima? Of course, of course. They have changed the messenger to God. Yeah. It is mentioned in the Bible today also that Jesus is not God. He never claimed divinity. He's yeah. a messenger of God. Yeah. That's what the teaching of the church is. Yes. Today's form is the changed form. How, how about Judaism? They still believe there is only one God. They don't regard Moses as God. So did you see a kalima like uh, there is only one God and Mo Musa al Rasulullah or something? No, like but that? they believe that Musa al Salam was the messenger of God. They yeah. believed in that. Yeah, but At the same time, they even believe that he was an imposter. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. If you believe Jesus is an imposter, now Billah, that is wrong. So, so you find some of the other mistakes here or there. Right. Therefore, Quran is the Furqan. Quran, Furqan yeah. means the criteria to judge right from wrong. So yeah. whatever matches with the Quran, we agree is the word of God. What is against the Quran contradicts, we say not the word of God. What doesn't contradict and doesn't match, ambiguous, may be right, may be wrong. I understand your point, sir. What I'm saying is, did you see any reference in probably in your study of Judaism? No. That the Kalima of the, so no. even the Kalima is gone. I mean, they no. don't even have that. Maybe I, Aramaic, maybe it will be in Aramaic. Or I don't language. know. I don't know of any such. Right, right, was. right. So, I mean, so, so, so they were still believing in this thing that you have to believe in Moses as messenger. But, yes. But there is nothing concrete like la ilaha illallah or, you know, like... I don't know of any in the scripture. Right, right, okay. Well, my last question is... Um, uh, Third last, fourth last. This last, yeah. Last of the last. Just last. Recent, last of the last. Last of the last, yes. Recently in India, it was in the news that uh, same-sex marriages got allowed, yeah? And, and uh, on reading upon it, yeah, I found out that they said that it is at the genetic level of people. Genetic, it's in the hormones, yeah, what they desire, what they don't desire. Now, I understand that Islam is completely against this. It doesn't allow this. But what I'm saying is, if someone's got that it, at a genetic level, yeah, and it's his choice, Very good and, and he, was, he, was, he was born with that, uh, with that kind of tendency, and yet Islam chooses to, uh, to punish him, on something, on something that he was born with. I agree with you. So God should... It sounds illogical. Yeah, so God, God made him like that and uh, God is punishing him for that as well. Brother asked a question that recently in India homosexuality has been permitted. Not permitted, but the law says it's not a big crime that was there in the Indian constitution. Yes. They have softened it, not permitted yet. Yes. Yes. It is a court case that took place in Delhi, it's not a law yet. Yes. There's a who and cry yet, there are many organizations fighting against it. So no law, it's a law in Canada, in yeah. USA, in UK, not in India yet. Right, okay. Yeah. And today, there are some scientific research that say that homosexuality is genetic. Yes, yes. So the brother asked the question, if homosexuality is genetic, then who's to blame? How can you consider it to be a sin? Very good question. Yes. This research was done earlier, a few years back, and later on, what was found out? That this is totally false. Right. And the person who propounded this himself was homosexual. Right, okay. So there's no scientific proof yet. It's an assumption. Right. Science doesn't testify yet that homosexuality is genetic. Right. In fact, Quran says in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 81, which says that, do you have lust for men more in preference to women, to homosexuality? Yes. Talking about Qawm Luth. Yes. It is prohibited in the Bible also, talking about Luth Yes. Also in the Quran it is prohibited. Yes. Homosexuality is prohibited completely. Right. It is an assumption that it's genetic, it's not genetic at all. How does it happen? I'll tell you. Yeah. The psychology, they tell us that once you overdo a thing, you start losing the pleasure. Right. So what God has permitted the normal sexual way of life, you start overdoing it. You start doing unnatural things. Right. 
what God has permitted natural things you do unnatural you start doing from the reverse side so once you get fed up of doing it so often that's the reason scientific research says a person who has no extramarital affairs enjoys the sexual life with his wife and husband the maximum yeah but this tendency is found in small children i mean you know I'm telling you. yeah so i mean they have not got married yet or let tasted me, it let me complete yeah yeah we we'll come to children later on for them talking about the adults yes <laughs> how it comes in children i'll tell you it okay so what happens is once you start overdoing it you want to enjoy more so that thing what is normal doesn't excite you any longer mm. then you start doing unnatural things it's not genetic right. talking about children yeah. how does children come it doesn't just come out from birth it's not from birth yeah. because they watch pornographic movies right they watch blue films it's haram the parents the way they behave in front of the children all this has a psychologic impact on the child right don't tell a person who's born then he starts becoming homosexual it's not like that at all it's right. a misconception right scientific research doesn't say that right 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 okay. it is because of the over exposure now children watch the blue films yeah the channels free to air you know there are yeah. more pornography channels than other channels yeah very good money so because of the media that's how when they see on the channel they start emulating and that's how they divert right. who's to blame the channel right why did the parent allow them right okay so they will be responsible for that right okay okay that, that answers me that's fine uh, one thing you said was that Brother, god god has to be last of the last question yeah, just... god has to be logical you said yeah so why did Not he god choose... has to be logical god is logical god is logical okay so why did he choose uh, 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 taking into account islam is a correct religion why did he choose to bring you into this world in islam and so many others in a different religion so so very that good. means he is being partial from the birth very good very good question brother asked the question that some people are born in muslim family and a person born in muslim family chances muslim exactly. born in non muslim family non muslim so why is god impartial maybe if you were born in a muslim family you would have been a muslim yes correct yes yes very That's good how question. it usually goes very good question the criteria to go to jannah is not to be born in a muslim family our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said every child is born in dinul fitr he is born as a muslim yeah. he submits civil to god later on he has been influenced by his parents by his elders by his teachers then he start doing idol worship fire worship he converts therefore okay. when a non muslim become the muslim the more appropriate word is revert rather than convert he yeah. comes back to the original faith yeah. now the criteria to go to jannah is not to be born in a muslim family sure. the criteria to go to jannah is surah al asr chapter number 103 verse number 1 to 3 we say wal as innal insana lafi khus illa alladhina amanu wa amilus solihati wa tawassaw bil haqqi wa tawassaw bis sabr that by the token of time man is very in a state of loss except those who have faith those who have righteous deeds those who exhort people to truth and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance the criteria go to jannah is all four things iman righteous deeds exhorting people to truth exhorting people to patience and perseverance if a person is born in muslim family the first criteria the chances are more yes not the remaining three yes fine now you you may be born in a righteous family but not having iman i don't know yeah but i mean why was he born in a christian family or a hindu family you know he should be born Brother, i mean it's more likely that he gets the other things easily. there are four things to go to jannah if a person is born in a muslim family but does not have righteous deeds does not do dawa he'll go to hell yeah okay he will not go to heaven okay, only by having a name zakir mohammad abdullah sultan will not take you to heaven even practice is important you may be born in a family which has righteous deeds but may not be having iman so everyone has different combination but almighty god says in surah fusilat chapter number 41 verse number 53 sanuri mayatina fil afaqi wa fi hanfusim hatta yatabayyana annahu al-haqq soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest region of the horizon and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth so allah takes it upon himself That to every human being, he'll put in his heart directly that this is the truth. Like how God sent me to put it directly into your heart here. Yeah. Correct. So, no. Now, so you now, mean to wait, say there wait, is wait, no wait, advantages? Wait, wait. Yeah. No, no, there are advantages. There are advantages. So it's a big advantage. You got everything very easy. But for a person who is in a different religion, it's it's a comp- he doesn't even come to Brother, know about it. Brother, you got so easy. Yeah. In three hours, you got it directly. Very easy. Right or wrong? I you understand. don't think it to be easy. Yes. See how you take it. I'm saying how lucky you are compared to the other non-Muslims. You attended my talk. Yes. Yet you're not accepting it. Who's to blame? You are God. 
Yes. You. Yeah, but there are not things. Me. There are things. <laughs> there are lot. No, 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 is a no, big no. thing. One not big to... thing. You want to make it big, you make it big. You want to make it important, it's important. Yeah. The problem is that Almighty God puts in every human being directly. Not always to Dr. Zakir Nai. Yeah. I am only 0.00001%. Yes. It's not me. Some through me, some through others, some directly. So on the day of judgment, you cannot complain to God. Leave other, at least you cannot complain. Yeah. You cannot go and tell God, I didn't know about Islam. Yeah, I cannot. Yeah. You cannot. Yeah, I cannot. Because you know, you may be having more knowledge of Islam than many Muslims, more in Muslim families. Yeah. Agreed. Because the way you're quoting Quran, the yeah. way you're asking me question, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So now, after reading so much about Islam, mm -hmm. and yet if you don't accept, Allah will question you. Yeah. You have no excuse whatsoever. The other non-Muslim will deal with them afterwards. Yeah. Let's talk about you first. Yes. Yeah, so you I... have no question at all yes. on the day of judgment. I have. I, I can say there, there were a few things which I was, I did not get the right answers. No, to. there are many Muslims who are born in Muslim family, not few, have many questions which are not answered. Yes. You have few, they have many. So you are in a better position. You cannot complain to God. I you have say, few questions not answered. I would, give God, I would give God that these are the basis because they did not get answered. That's why I did not accept it. If I don't accept it, maybe which, I will later. I don't know. Which question saying. you don't have, tell me now. <laughs> tell me now, come on. You can tell God, Dr. Zakir Naik asked you in front of 20, 30,000 people, what question you don't know about the well, Quran? Come on. First of all, I, the answer that you gave, that it, was, it is because of media and blue films. I know, I know small, small kids who don't even have access to that and still they have do, that. Those Which films. kids? Name them. What nonsense they're talking. Yes. I'm a medical doctor. What do you know? I have Are you a medical doctor? I have seen it. Are you a medical doctor? Well, let me tell you. I, I have I'm seen asking, my... Are you a medical doctor? Yes I'm or no? I'm not. I'm Fine. an engineer. I'm a medical doctor. Fine. Okay. Now you are telling a doctor you have seen. If I tell you that I have seen a building made of paper, you know, come in Bombay. I have seen a building, the pillars were made of paper. Will you believe in it? I won't. I have not seen it. Go finish. Yeah. See, this is the first Alu Ahli Zikri in Gundula Talamud. As the person who knows. No, yeah. I have seen, you have seen. Does it carry weight? Yeah. yeah. I have seen a building made of paper. Will you believe? No, but your point is that it's only because of media, but I know... I no, know point so. is it is not genetic. There is no scientific proof at all, it is genetic, I'm telling you. Right, right. What I'm telling you, it can be one of the reasons. Yeah. What is, there can be 20 other reasons. Right. One of the reasons can be media. Yeah. You tell me it can't be media, I'll disprove you. Right, right. One right. of the reasons can be media. Right. Fine? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. Actually, I have to Actually. go through all the other questions Very that I well, have go mind, through, and I will need some time, and then Take your time, I will do it. But, but, yeah. hope it's not too late. I don't know how long I'm going to live. But, see, if I die I, in the state of getting more knowledge, yeah, then I can always tell God that I was, no, just, no, I was just getting more and more knowledge. You cannot, you cannot. I'm That's, telling you, you I, cannot. You cannot. I will give Shahid on the day of judgment, I give you a chance. You cannot. See, I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow or not. See, 90% of my questions are answered, but I have to go through more things. People accept Islam with 10% acceptance. So that girl, according to me, you have more knowledge than all the people who accepted Islam, according to mine. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe that's true. But my principle is, unless I'm 100% right. clear, I will, I will no. not take such a big step. I will only take that big step if Brother, I'm 100% clear. many things you did in life without knowing 100%. Did you know how much you're going to earn in Dubai that you came here 100%? Yeah, See, that way I'm ready to say the, the, the thing. But, but the thing is, I've seen some thing. Muslims who say that if, if you have an iota of doubt, then you're not a Muslim. So who said that? Who said that? They say if you have... If are you, you going to follow the Quran or are you going to say some Muslim? Forget about Muslims. No, you, you want to, to you judge? Have, you have to believe it in 100%. If you if you, want... Even if you have 99% faith... Who said that? Not... Who said that? Does the Quran say that? It doesn't say that. You follow Quran, don't follow the other Muslims. Don't follow me also, follow Quran. So if I tell you, if I tell you that I believe that Prophet Muhammad was a prophet of God 90% and 10% I have doubts, am I, am I a Muslim? See, you, you tell no, me do you believe in messenger or not a God? I other believe, doubts are separate. I believe in one God and I believe in his messengers. 90%. I, I believe in his, yes, 90%. I have, Which 10% you don't believe? Tell me now, I'll clarify I, that. I can't recall those questions now. Oh, why? Yeah, so you I can't recall? Go. This is escapism. No, not really. I'm not, I am true to I'm, my heart. I am I'm not, not escaping. I am not asking you to accept Islam. I'm not asking you. I know. I'm only telling you. If God forbid something happens to you before you accept Islam, you will not be forgiven. I'm only telling you See, I'm an being, advice. I'm not being prejudiced here. I'm true, being true. Take I'm your not. time. Take your time. When you need me, you can call me on the email. Sure. Zakir at irf.net. My pleasure to reply to you, brother. How do you spell irf? I-R-F.net. IRF.net. Okay. It's a short form for Islamic Research Foundation. Right, okay. Yes, or you can watch me on Peace TV. Sure. Inshallah. All right, okay. Thank you so much. See you yes, next sir. time. Inshallah.
The next question from the sister. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Priya. I work in Dubai and I have a question. It's about a myth that I heard from a few friends about uh, Islam. Uh, it's about marriage, basically. Uh, is it true that a Muslim can only marry a girl younger? Sister asked the question that is it true that a Muslim can only marry a girl who's younger? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when first time he married, he was at the age of 25 and his first wife, Khatija, may Allah be pleased with her, she was 40 years old. 15 years elder to him. So there's no such statement that you can marry a girl who's younger. You have to marry a girl who's virtuous. The Prophet said, when you look for a life partner, you look for four things. Beauty, wealth, nobility, and virtue. The best is virtue. So Prophet Muhammad saw virtue in Khatija, may Allah be pleased with her, and he married her. So best is virtue, sister. Okay, thanks, that's all. You're most welcome. There's a request that, inshallah, all those who accepted Islam will give a copy of the translation of the Quran to them. And inshallah, I request the volunteers to arrange some copies of the translation. Inshallah, Mr. Ibrahim Bumala will give the translation. To the gents who have accepted Islam, I would like to request them to be standing below the stage so that after we answer the last question, we can have them come on the stage. Yes, brother. Good morning. First of all, let me congratulate you on having such a eventful and good uh, event here. It was very enlightening. Uh, now let me put forward my question. Now we have seen some interesting debates, some very uh, curious arguments in favor of a religion against another religion. What we're doing is a comparative study in religions. A very logical question. Our goal is not to continue compare religions or say one is better than the other. Our goal is a better uh, society, a better life, a better world, a peaceful world with more compassion and harmony. What is the logical conclusion of this all? Are we saying that till everybody in the world is not Muslim, we are not going to have a continuum and equilibrium? Or till everybody is not going to be Christian, we are not going to Because until unless everybody is one, this argument is going to continue. What is our goal? What are we heading to? Brother asked the question that we had good arguments, good debates. What is the ultimatum? Do you want to make everyone Muslim? Do you want to make everyone Christians? What is ultimate? Ultimate is to search for peace. Through? Through? Through the Creator Almighty God. The path? The path because, is... Because there is only one path. One path is submitting a will to God. And that is only one path which we know what it is. Yes, yeah, submitting so, a will to God. Yeah, so there has to be only one conclusion. One conclusion, correct. In so, so, in the so, Islam. So, so the logical end to this is the entire world becomes a Muslim. Not logical end to it. The thing is there that if those who get the truth, those who Allah gives hidayah, they'll become Muslim. Our job is to deliver the message. The Quran mentions in Surah Ghashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21-22, Allah says to the messenger, Your job is to deliver the message. Changing hearts, you are not the manager of affairs. You are not the manager of affairs. I agree. It is Almighty God. So what are we doing? We are delivering the message. I agree. Changing hearts in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in our hand. I agree. What we are doing, are we getting peace or not? The thing to be noted is, when people say this is the best religion, and if someone else says this is the best, there is comparative study. And logically we can find which is the best. But we cannot continue to compare Till the end of the world, there has Not to be till the end, end of the world, till the end of my life. Oh. Till the end of your life. We are here to deliver the message. It is nothing about conversion. We deliver the message, you like it, you accept it, we can't force anyone. No, I'm not saying you about, tell me one I'm thing, not saying about irrespective, you and me. irrespective of the non-Muslims. You know, majority non-Muslims didn't accept Islam, correct? Yeah. But did they benefit or not? They certainly will. They benefit, that's sufficient. Some people get 10 points, some people 20, some people 100. I maybe agree, maybe agree. 7 8 people got 100 points benefit. Mr. Other Jackier. people got 10 points. I am satisfied even if you get 1 point benefit. Mr. Whether Jackier. did you benefit or not from this lecture? I did. I certainly Finished. Did. You benefited, I am happy. Oh, I am happy. I am not asking you to accept Islam. No, no, no. That's if you not. benefited, I am happy. I benefited. You benefit, I benefit. I benefited. Finish. I thank you a lot. I mean, that was, and especially this open forum question and session was very enlightening. It basically... And very proved... few people allow such open question answers. Exactly. Have you seen any I mean, Christian? Brother, no. you are a Christian, correct? I am not a Christian. So what are you? Uh, I am a Brahmin. Brahmin. Have you seen any Hindu? 
in India having such live open sessions? No, no, no. I mean, I, I watched your uh, debate with Ravi Shankar and I saw how it happened. And, uh, and what happened to him? And what happened to him? And I also know Pope Benedict refused to uh, uh, talk with you on that Quran issue. Now, uh, thank you. Now, what I mean to say is that we are not saying that people should convert to our religion or your religion. We are not saying that. We are open people. We are people on a, a much higher intellectual level. What I am saying is that how is the world going to be for generations to come? Our what should what should we pray? It's not what should we do. See, what we do is in our... What we should pray? We should pray to Almighty God. What we should do? We should follow His commandments. We should try to find out the truth. And whichever level, you may find 10%, somebody 20%, we have to give the message. So our duty and is to continue giving the message without thinking what the result is going to be. Not without thinking. Without... We are giving the message. And we want the people to follow the true message. Whether they accept or not, I'm not bothered. I cannot force anyone. I cannot compel anyone. Fine? Yep. But while giving the message, some people are convinced 10%, some 20%, some 100%. Whatever it is, if I make a difference, I'm happy. Some people may not like it also. That see, Zakir is quoting, they may not like it. So I'm trying my level best to speak the truth and deliver the message. Am I talking about killing anyone here? No. Am I talking about torturing anyone? No. So if I'm talking about humanity based on our Creator Almighty God, then what's the problem? Mr. Jakir, I understand. Have I told that you should kill the Hindus? No. I Have understand. I told you should kill the Christians? I understand your point. If allow someone, me. Allow if me. someone in comparative religion tries to bring animosity, that is wrong. Talking about violence, that is wrong. Another religion, that is wrong. But we are not doing it. And Very good. Us, yes. And let us not talk about people who are doing it. Let us talk about people like you and me who are not doing all that. Very good. Who are only benefiting people by telling them the truth, not forcing them to believe into anything, right? Me and you together. Very good. But if that continues, the division remains. There's no division. The what division, is the division? The division. Brother, I love you, brother. I love you too. But uh, finish. Christians, so where's the division? No, I, I, I love all of you. The Christians will still keep preaching. The Judaism let, will still keep preaching. Let them preach. Keep preaching. But there is division still, isn't it? Brother, someone, what do you have I to want, realize? I want to see a, a world with with, with complete uh, compassion and humanity, without no divisions. So with, do you think there's no compassion in me? Uh, there's a lot of compassion in you. Do you think there's no humanity in me? A lot of it. So why are you looking at me from the other side? No, I'm not looking at you. I'm asking you a question. I'm not looking at you. I'm Basically, I'm looking at Pope Benedict, who refused to talk to you. So I'm tell Pope Benedict, tell that to Pope Benedict. I am Dr. Zakir Naik, just a student of Islam and comparative religion. I have come here to spread the truth. And I'll continue to spread the truth because that's my message. Because Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusila, chapter 41, verse number 33, Waman Asan who call a mimman doil Allahi, Wamil Solihan, call a Indian Muslim. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness as a Muslim? That's the reason I changed from a doctor of body to a doctor of a soul. Wakhir Dawan, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We request all of you to please. I would please request that those brothers who have accepted Islam. If they can come on the stage, I request uh, Mr. Ibrahim Bumala to come on the stage and. I'd like to say some. We request all the audience to please remain seated. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين نحن سعيدون في هذه الليلة المباركة من ليالي شهر رمضان المبارك بأن نستمع إلى الدكتور ذاكر نايق في هذه المحاضرة وهذه المناقشة الهادفة سواء للمسلمين أو لغير المسلمين من الحاضرين ونحن سعيدون أكثر بأن يسلم في هذه الليلة هذا العدد المتميز من الأخوة والأخوات غير المسلمات وندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى لهم بالتوفيق وأن تكون لهم حياة سعيدة في ظل الإيمان وفي ظل الدين الإسلامي الحنيف بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذي الدنيم of الله سبحانه وتعالى most merciful we are very happy here in Dubai International Holy Quran Award to listen 
from Dr. Zakir Nayak, his lecture and speeches, and we are more happy with those people who got converted to Islam from men and women. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lead all of us to his best way. ونبارك للأخوة والأخوات هذه الخطوة الجميلة والطيبة في إسلامهم في هذه الليلة. And again we congratulate all of those brothers and sisters who became Muslim from this night. And alhamdulillah رب العالمين. ونعتبر هذه ثمرة طيبة من ثمار جائزة دبي الدولية للقرآن الكريم. وندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعل الإسلام أجر إسلام هؤلاء في ميزان حسنات صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد آل مكتوم راعي ومؤسس هذه الجائزة. And we count those as fruits of the Dubai International Holy Quran Award activities and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept this in page of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Vice President of UAE and ruler of Dubai who assisted this organization, Dubai International Holy Quran Award, 13 years back. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. On behalf of Dubai International Holy Quran Awards and the organizing committee of these lectures. First, we would like to thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for helping us in conducting this program successfully. We are very grateful to His Highness Sheikh Muhammad bin Rashid Al Maktoum and the Dubai Holy Quran Award for inviting Dr. Zakir Naik again to Dubai. Thank you for all of your presence. We conclude this session with the greetings of peace and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.